Welcome to another edition of 10 Buck Test Bench. Whoops, almost knocked the camera over again. Uh, we're going to start working on our ICO signal generator here. And uh, while the cabinet is physically in good shape, it's plenty dirty. That leather handle needs work. And initially, I had thought that I would not remove the handle because I thought these center things were rivets running all the way through as these are rivets but it turns out I don't know if you can see in there or not they're more that center piece is more like a nail and two rivets are a rivet on either side so the nail is evidently part of the bracket so I can cut the two rivets out or drill them out remove the bracket slip the handle out I'll be able to restore the handle I'll be able to glass bead these I'll probably give them a coat of black paint and I'll put a light gray over the wrinkle finish and just freshen up the, the, the color it will be more of a wash than a paint job so that'll take care of that that'll clean that up in short order and for those out there who are going to comment on it yes I'm wearing my ratty old shop shirt today I love my warm shop shirt it's rainy here in New Hampshire even though it's May you know, near the end of May it's uh, 50 degrees outside and pretty raw you can probably hear the dehumidifiers running in the background. We are going to have to, of course, uh, pull this bezel off and repaint the front of this. Put it back together, we'll clean the glass, but I'm going to wait, hold off on that until the uh, electrical restoration is done. Not a bad looking unit. The uh, copper plated chassis and closing uh, all of the circuitry probably not quite the level that the precision apparatus gear is but certainly aimed more at the professional level than the home gamer um, Ico was stepping their game up I don't think I've ever seen a Heathkit signal generator built quite this well but we'll get this thing recapped I think that's all it's going to need in fact I haven't plugged it in but I'm betting it works uh, the condition of this thing is very very clean uh, so I'm just going to refresh the capacitors probably run the tubes through tube tester replace the electrolytics of course do a quick calibration and this one will go on the test bench but uh, thought you just might want to see what the inside of one of these ICO signal generators look like. We'll pull the bottom cover well, off. And there's show a you pleasant that. surprise. I popped the bottom cover off, and somebody has already recapped this. Uh, it's got orange drops where the paper caps used to be, and a couple of fairly modern uh, electrolytics. Now we'll run a test on those, check the ESR, and make sure they're still up to snuff. But they appear to be fairly recent. The only thing I've got to do or remains to be done is there's one paper cap hidden way down there underneath the coils. Uh, it's the only one that didn't he didn't change or whoever did this didn't change. And uh, it looks like it's going to be a bit of a chore to get to, but I'm sure worth the effort. And I've got to get in here and change the uh, output connectors to BNC. All of my cabling is BNC. It's much easier to deal with. I'll keep the original Amphenols and put them in a bag inside the unit. But this thing has obviously been cared for during its life cycle. We'll get that one paper cap changed out. Check those two electrolytics. He just left a can on here for aesthetics. We've got a grommet we have to change. Other than that, I think this unit's ready to rock and roll. So we'll finish this up and show okay. you the results. We pulled the shield off the line cord filter and found us another paper capacitor right across the line. That has to go. I've seen what happens when those explode. In fact, I've showed you what happens when those explode in one of the signal generators I rebuilt. The whole inside of the thing was full of soot. So that'll go. Uh, along with the paper capacitor down here that I spotted, there's another one lurking way, way down in the corner. That's going to be a real chore to get to. But we'll manage, we'll figure out how to get in there because I have to get in here to change that Amphenol connector to a BNC. Same with the one that's going to be hiding under this cover. In fact, we can 
pull this cover. I'm hoping this is just one screw. If there's one on the other side, I don't know how I'm going to get to it. But let's see what's underneath here. Now well, it looks like one screw is all it is. And I'm going to have trouble getting it out from under that resistor. I might have to take that resistor off the chassis. But that's all right. We'll get underneath there. We'll change that out to a BNC. Make sure nothing in the uh, attenuator is blown up. Not uncommon for people to accidentally backfeed voltage into the attenuator and burn up a resistor. I'm not saying that's the case here. I don't know. We'll get in there and look. We've got two 0.1 microfarad capacitors in series here for 0.05 microfarad. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, I've done it myself when I haven't had it, you know, years have passed. If I didn't have the right cap, you can put two in series. I think I'll pull them out though and put the correct single capacitor in place. It'll be a little bit neater and a little bit less stray capacitance. I see several questionable solder joints in here that we'll have to redo when the caps were redone. And I'm going to go through and check all the resistors. There's a lot of very old carbon composition resistors in here. So we'll go through and measure all of those, make sure they're within tolerance. We'll get this line cord off, replace the um, the grommet. The grommet that was in there literally crumbled into dust when I touched it. So we'll get that replaced. Squirt a little tuner lube on the uh, wafer switch here and uh, put this thing back together and see if we can calibrate it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, and here we have the finished product. I'll leave it to you, my viewers, to tell me what you think. I think it's uh, came out spectacular, but, uh, you know, I have a vested interest. I could have used body putty, spot putty, to fill in the little porosity in the casting. To me, that's just overkill. Uh, this is not going to be a shelf queen again. This is going to be used on the bench and is going to get the nicks and scratches in it. And I'm sure over time I'm going to have to touch up the finish, but the knob's nice and polished up. The action's nice and smooth. I fixed the pointer was rubbing. That's no longer doing that. I've cleaned the glass inside. It was horribly filthy. The little uh, line here on the vernier scale was, you couldn't see it. I mean, it was five times that width and it was just covered with grunge, but now it's nice and clean, back together. We've, uh, Done a little work on the handle. I'm not a leather worker. If I was, I'd probably make a new one because this is pretty dry rotted, but it looks pretty presentable compared to what it did. And we've sprayed some finish on it, covered up the dirt and grunge. Uh, we washed it first, of course. And after we got it as clean as we could, you can't get all the staining out. Uh, dried it in the oven to make sure all the moisture was pushed out of it, then sprayed some paint on it. I left the original screws in. There's some very minor tarnishing on them, but they are the originals and they don't look all that bad. So we'll put this up on the 10 buck test bench and get busy on our next project. For now, I'm the Radio Mechanic. Thanks for watching. See you.